Since August 2021, the FBI has received reports of several packages that were sent to US companies in transportation, insurance, and defense. The packages came in two variants. One mimicked a message from HHS, US Department of Health and Human Services, with a letter inside with references to COVID-19 protection guidelines and a flash drive with additional materials. The other imitated a package from Amazon, gift wrapped. Inside was a fake thank you letter, a fake gift card, and a LilyGo USB flash drive. The FBI discovered that the flash drives were sent out by the hack group Fin7, known for their dark side and black matter encryption tools. In this video, we have taken apart such a flash drive, connected it to a working computer, recorded all the changes it made to the system, and we will show you in detail how an attack can be organized against your company or against your family. And most importantly, you'll see how to protect yourself from this threat. This video was created by the SumSub verification platform, but more about SumSub in a bit. Oh yeah, you've probably wondered who this mysterious voice is. I think it's time to get acquainted. My name is Elliot, and I am your voice assistant who helps you survive in the online jungle. <clears throat> well, let's get back to our story. It looks like an ordinary flash drive. In fact, it is the bad USB, which is capable of causing irreparable damage to your data. Let's open it up. As we can see inside, there is an Arduino Pro Micro board. Let's take a closer look. This board clearly has, but does not use, a micro USB interface. And as we can see, in order not to arouse suspicion of the victim, the connector was soldered to a classic USB plug. And the board itself is obviously not designed for soldering full USB. In this case, they did the tricky thing. The plug was glued to the case and the board was soldered with a pair of rigid wires. This was done to force the ejection of the stick onto the case and not onto the board. So what does this very bad flash drive do? Let's check it out. We have a computer that is not connected to a network and does not contain any important data. The flash drive does not know that we now have a keylogger running on this computer, which records all keystrokes. We will check the log of this program later, but for now, let's take a look at the computer screen. Immediately after connecting, the execute window opens. Let's stop the recording and look at what was written in the startup window. This command runs malicious code from the attacker's server. For example, from a rented DigitalOcean virtual type. There is no data on the fake flash drive, of course. Moreover, the behavior is clear. It is not a flash drive, but in this case, it's the keyboard. More precisely, the device is programmed as a keyboard. This can be checked in Task Manager. Now let's have a look at the log. What do we see? A miniature device with a keyboard controller immediately after connection performs random keystrokes. The ability to pre-program these keystrokes is usually used to enter any OS command by using the corresponding hotkeys. For example, Windows R or Alt F2. The most popular form factor of such a device is a flash drive. But given the small size of the device, it can be built anywhere, whether it's a webcam or even a USB cable, OMG cable. The suitable device form is set by the context, as the choice must be optimal in one situation or another. In addition, this attack requires social engineering skills in most cases. The flash drive is essentially a decoy. It is thrown in different ways in a letter, in a parcel, in a mailbox. It's accompanied by letters which convince the victim that it's authentic and does not arouse suspicion. The main thing for the victim is to plug the flash drive into the computer. Obviously, once a flash drive attack occurs, well, it can be pretty tricky to undo it. It is, of course, a hardware attack at the end of the day. Hi, my name is Lucas from SumSub, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we can prevent some of these attacks from occurring in the first place. You know what could lower the amount of attacks that occur like this? Well, by simply verifying the address in the beginning. SumSub is a leader in online address verification, uh, whether it be in banking, finance, gambling, or many other business types. We're able to verify the address of someone through three main ways. The first one being document upload, basically taking in that utility bill that we're also familiar with. Something that we like to call geolocation, which is essentially finding out where you are based on a number of factors without the document upload. And the third option would then be access to government databases where available. Companies can then implement these methods simultaneously 
or pick and choose which parts are gonna suit your business best. If you wanna learn more about SumSub's address verification solutions, as well as our other products, please feel free to click the link below. The attack is extremely fast, as keystrokes are made quite quickly. It's quite possible that the user will not even notice anything. As a hardware part, attackers sometimes use ready-made solutions like Hack5. However, a person who has heard at least something about Rubber Ducky may suspect danger from the logo. Scattering around dozens of such flash drives must be cheap and widespread. In fact, such flash drives must become a consumable item. It's true, homemade solutions dictate their own limitations. This table shows approximate prices for devices that can be disguised as a flash drive and their compatibility with operating systems. As you can see, all this is extremely cheap and available in almost any country in the world. The bigger problem is getting the casing. Usually, criminals buy the cheapest flash drive of the right size and remove the contents, leaving only the casing. Or they print the casing on a 3D printer. As for the software part, Arduino built-in loader supports multiple reflashing. It's ATmega32U4. You can write to it the commands repeatedly for each specific situation. In essence, you only need to fill it up with user application code. It's not possible to extract such code from the flash drive which came into our hands. But we have written a sketch that could perform all the functions recorded in the log. Now let's see what an attacker is likely to do to gain remote access. The shortest way is to run a RAT remote administration tool, that is, to install a backdoor on the computer. For example, Windows, Linux, each of the above commands is built in and as short as possible. In one action, it downloads and runs code over HTTP, or better, HTTPS. Before the attack, the attacker most likely won't know what the restrictions are on the local network, so there is no absolute guarantee of success. The signal may simply not get through. But the execution of the commands, even in this case, will give the attacker enough information. First, since the server address is given by name, a DNS query will be executed. The DNS system is distributed and the query from the victim's computer will usually be sent anyway. If the hacker is using his own DNS zone delegated to a subordinate server, he will see the query in the logs. This will be a signal that the flash drive was connected and the RCE has occurred. However, this does not guarantee that network access is possible. Second, if access to the internet is not restricted in any way, the attacker's server will receive a HTTP request which can also be seen in the logs. This will be a signal that a network connection is possible and that the hacker can remotely control the victim's computer. However, this does not guarantee that the security mechanisms of the operating system allow the execution of the remote control program. Nevertheless, even if the attack fails, the attacker will have information about the rules of access to the internet from the user's computer and their awareness of such incidents. Such information can be used in repeat attacks. And there is an even more terrifying type of attack that is often overlooked. An attack on a locked down computer. Imagine that someone came to your house for a visit, or broke into your apartment when you weren't there, or pretended to be a client in your office, and, being unnoticed, he inserted a flash drive into the USB input of the turned off computer. When the office system unit is pushed into a dusty dark corner, it's easy enough to insert something inconspicuously there and people won't notice anything for several years. Do you often look at the back of your computer at home? But your mouse or keyboard can be replaced with an identical one that has a built-in bad USB. But why do this if the computer does not work? It's simple. The criminal programs the flash drive to send keystrokes, not immediately, but every N hours or minutes, to catch the moment when the machine will be turned on and unlocked. This is called delayed RCE. As long as the PC is locked, all clicks will go to the password input field and disappear, i.e. the attack will go virtually unnoticed. In fact, such a device makes useless all attempts to ensure security by locking the computer, which everyone is so used to. After all, once left unattended, a laptop can have such a device inserted into it. And no matter whether the computer has been locked or not, bad USB flash drive will try to perform clicks, we mean arbitrary code, at intervals of a few minutes, hours or days. And sooner or later, the moment will definitely come when the PC will be unlocked. Then, the malicious code will be executed and the hacker will get remote access. And now let's talk about how to protect yourself. Probably the best protection here is to use specialized software solutions. 
allowing the connection of only pre-approved devices from the list, a whitelist. Each USB device has its own unique vendor ID and product ID, which are listed on the whitelist. All other USB devices, including bad USB sticks, will not be recognized by the OS. This method perfectly protects not only from the attack described above, but also from a number of other attacks and can generally keep working computers from a host of undesirable consequences. And the most important rule is common sense and caution. Just as children must not talk to strangers, the adults must not put any unfamiliar devices into their computers. Well, you can do it only on a safe, clean computer with no important data and no internet access, if you're really curious. Well, SumSub is always ready to help you satisfy your curiosity safely and win all these battles in the online jungle.